The beginning was filled with all kinds of wonderful things, which means I came from a very privileged background. And um, I was one of three daughters, and my mom was a John Robert Powers model. She was extremely beautiful. Daddy was a polo player that had just everything you could possibly imagine, and a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. And he fell in love with this beautiful woman, this beautiful model, and married her and had these three beautiful daughters. And they had this very wild, kind of wonderful life in a big 40-room mansion on the Jersey Shore across from the ocean. So from the outside, it looked like we had everything. This is our story. The story of three sisters who came from a childhood filled with beauty, elegance, opulence, and abundance, coupled with uncertainty and doubt, and yet made our lives what we wanted rather than becoming statistics. The sad part that nobody ever knew about was that mother was an alcoholic. She had it all, and I watched her destroy herself day by day. Something about her life was completely unfulfilled, and what she did is she drank. There were a lot of sad times, angry times. Um, I think a lot of that was because mommy was angry. And when she drank, she got angrier. And when we were small, the drinking was not, it was confined to certain specific holidays and celebrations. And then as we got older, it became more and more uh, chronic. You can't fix it. Our father's inherited fortune placed his three daughters in the blessed cradle of unlimited abundance. In the early 50s, we lived in our grandmother's brownstone on 57th and Madison, where we attended the most prestigious private Catholic girls' school in New York. Every weekend, the family fled the city to enjoy Evergreen Farm, our estate at the Jersey Shore. I had a lot of great memories, a lot of, a lot of great memories, a lot of fun things that we did, a little trauma, a lot of great stories, and a lot of love. There was a lot of love in there. My parents, they were either loving each other or killing each other. There was no in-between. It was never dull. Educated at the finest schools, birthday parties at the most elegant restaurants and the plaza, presented to society at debutante balls. Yet, on the other hand, there was confusion, dysfunction, and mixed messages that did little to prepare us for life. Mommy, why aren't you happy? I was dying to figure out what to be able to do to assist my mother in becoming a happy person. So from the age of 11, 12, 13, I would sit with her and I actually learned how to drink with her and smoke with her and hang out with her and spend until wee hours of the morning asking her questions. Well, as we all know, alcoholism was a disease, but it was almost like it was a mission for me to be able to assist and support her in finding her way to be able to be a happy person. Well, Lynn is a middle child and she was the peacemaker. She was the enabler. She was the one who was trying to make sense out of her reality by getting to know mother and spending time with her. I handled my circumstances differently. I basically disconnected from that family of origin because I thought that their behavior was rather crazy, erratic, and dysfunctional. Those times when I would stand by the window and look out I had this awareness of being in existence. Remember, a, the youngest child in a family of extroverts who were larger than life, a lot of my younger childhood, I really didn't even feel like I was in existence. And those moments in my bedroom when I would look out my window, I had the awareness that I was, that I was present, that I was alive that I had choices, 
that I was a person. Living through some of the years with my family, it was like, like being in the ocean in a hurricane. So mean. So mean? Why do you have to say so that? So mean, oh, so, so, so mean, so mean, so mean. You're gonna run, who are you gonna run to? Uh, when mother was drinking, she got really, really nasty. And for some peculiar reason, she would search out ways to hurt us. It got to the point when I was a teenager that I just wouldn't tell her anything that was important to me because when she was drinking, she'd turn around and smack you in the face with it. You disgust me. She would change dramatically from being loving and kind and affectionate to being cold and distant and vicious. No, you don't want to do that. And I never no. knew what would set her off. I never knew if it was something I said or did, if it was something that happened. I never knew if I was to blame for her behavior changes. That was a, a scary feeling because at any moment she could get set off and, and turn on you. Go from, from warm and loving to ice cold and, and, and cut through you like a laser. That was very um, a scary way to grow up, never knowing if she was gonna be there with love or to be there with criticism and, and venom. My sisters were my only refuge to be able to find some compassion, some safety, some support to be able to get through those really rough times when things were really spiraling out of control. Frequently, I would jump in the middle of the arguments just to deflect it because I felt that, I mean, Lenny would cry and Lenny would never fight back. Lenny was always the peacemaker. To this day, Lenny's the peacemaker. Cherie and I have a battle royal. Lenny jumps in the middle. Ooh, let's see how we can make this all go away and make everybody happy again. Um, she was always that way, but I was always a fighter. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Look at you, look at you, look at you. Alcohol and inconsistency left Lynn, Cherie, and me questioning. And it started in me, in a very young age, to ask the questions, what is the nature of happiness? If money doesn't buy happiness, where does one find happiness and fulfillment? I wanted to know, because I could see myself following in her footsteps and being incredibly unhappy. But I really thought, if there's anything that this is here to teach me, it's to find out what is the purpose of life. Cast adrift in a sea of doubt, uncertainty, insecurity, and fear, we searched for our inner and outer compass. When Bobby and Lenny were raised as twins, Lenny was 11 months younger than Bobby, and they were raised in the same class, and Bobby was the bright one. She was the one who was smart, who never had to study. She always got good grades, and she was pretty, and uh, but she was the book smart person. Lenny was the personality. Lenny was the diver and the swimmer and the horseback rider and the singer. And so Lenny had a lot of attention around being the star, the extrovert, the people person. And when I came along, I didn't know where I fit or what I had to offer. We never talked about our feelings or what we wanted. We didn't talk about our insides. The cause and effect of alcoholism has impacted millions of families. Doesn't discriminate. Alcoholism damages the interpersonal dynamics of the family system. Alcoholism is colorblind. It cuts across genders, race, religion. It cuts across 
everything that separates us. And when you have an alcoholic in your family, it creates dysfunction because they have made alcohol more important than their own individual choice to be a part of a family, to be a person who is making conscious choices. They've surrendered to the bottle. And when you start drinking seriously, your emotional development somewhat gets arrested. So being raised by Mary and Milton was kind of like being raised by Peter Pan and Wendy. It's like being raised by a couple of 16 year olds. And there was, after I got to be at eight, about 18 or 20, I really felt that I was emotionally more mature than either one of them, which is a very bizarre feeling. But that's, that's who they were and where they were. There are, there are marks that, that if I were looking now, uh, behavior changes uh, that, come, that come when someone drinks. Uh, in the case of Milton, he went from being uh, a person who was, who was a nice, gregarious person to a person who was, in my presence, very gregarious, and yet I understand that when I wasn't there, uh, and at various times in their life, it would cause him to, to come to violence with his wife. Uh, and that Mary was just as violent back. It was scary. Get away from me! Get away from me! The violence, the volume, the violence, the screaming and shouting, the noises, they were terrifying to a little child. Alcohol is the number one drug problem in America. It insidiously invades life at its most basic point, the individual's reality. Alcohol traumatized our lives and made it impossible to know what normal was. So we went through this amazing roller coaster of this incredible life that looked to the world as if it was glamorous and beautiful, and it was, on one level. And then we had the mommy story that was very sad. She killed herself pretty much. Uh... When she was, when we were growing up, she and she was drinking heavily. She said that she was trying to drink herself to death. And from me to Lenny to Cherie, all of us have memories staying up until six o'clock in the morning trying to talk her out of it. She finally died of cirrhosis of the liver. And when Daddy remarried, which he did a year after Mother passed away, he ha had a had what what we would call a a, a mid a midlife crisis after Mother died. And um, when he died, which was 10 years later, we found out the sad, sad truth, which was that all three girls were disinherited. Well, it was an end of an era because our father sold our family home in New Jersey. He sold our apartment in New York. And he basically said, uh, goodbye. Life as you knew it is over. Alcohol wreaked havoc with our family made daddy codependent with mother, and yet he did nothing to resolve the issues. When mother died, he couldn't live without someone to take care of, and found a woman who made such stringent demands on him that he capitulated to her wishes and disinherited his daughters. The ultimate abandonment empowered all three sisters to create fulfilling lives. As hard as it is, life is not over. It deepens the search for meaning. What you make of your life is up to you. That was very important to me growing up because I saw, regardless of growing up in a home that was an alcoholic home, where we didn't know from day to day whether mother would be drunk or sober, we really didn't know what was going to surface. Growing up in that kind of unstable, uncertain conditions, and then finding yourself feeling completely cast adrift because your father has disinherited all of his children after your mother passed away. It's easy to feel victimized, to feel sorry for yourself, to feel angry at your parents for your circumstances. But the thing that makes the difference is to be able to learn the lesson, 
to get beyond it and then to take a hold of your life and say, what I make of my life is up to me. Blaming other people, blaming my circumstances for the rest of my life is inconsequential. What's important is that I take my circumstances and learn something from them and then apply that and make my life what I want. So, you can change your tomorrow from your yesterday by changing yourself. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference.